In today's Elden Ring video, we're gonna take a look at some of the best endgame legendary talismans that will make you way stronger. And since I know a lot of you play with different classes and different builds, I'm going over a wide range of talismans that hopefully will cover all, or at least most of them. Now, this video will obviously involve some spoilers, especially for some endgame parts, and a couple of quest lines needed to get these items in the first place, so you have been warned. But let's begin with two early options that are the best in in terms of pure stats both for melee classes and another one for casters or hybrids and these are the legendary radagons sword seal and marika's sword seal now the radagons sword seal can be acquired the earliest and it's probably the best early legendary giving you five whole points into vigor endurance strength and dexterity respectively so that's five for each it's actually quite an early acquisition from the fort faroth around the center of Kaelid. you simply have to make your way to the rooftop navigating these enemies drop into the second gap in the rooftop and then navigate the platform onto the right side until you reach this one with the oversized rat from here simply jump down and you should be able to get the sword seal right away giving you a massive boost to your stats especially if you play with a melee character now if you want to have something that affects your other stats including mind intelligence faith and arcane especially for a mage or a hybrid then the next one which is marika's sword seal is the one for you. Now this is something that you acquire a bit later in the game when you reach El Fael, Brace of the Helic Tree and then you have to navigate these vines, make your way downward, defeat an annoying boss in this area and then reach all the way to the prayer room which is actually needed for a different side quest too, also for this video so it's a good idea to come here. But from this point on simply go through the outer wall, take it to the right side right here using these nearby pillars and try to make your way to the ground floor using the nearby platforms and also carefully without dying or falling to your death. Once you're over there at the ground floor, just navigate into the backside until you see this fog room and once you're inside of it, you will get the legendary seal right away with some nice boost to all of your stats, especially again if you play as a caster. But let's talk about another one coming up to the third spot, this is the Taker's Cameo. It restores a pretty significant 15% of your HP upon killing one enemy but that quickly becomes insane if you take out even a small group of enemies, literally giving you a full HP bar back in just a handful of kills with a proper build. Now to acquire this in the first place you need to complete a portion of the Volcano Manor questline, specifically the first three assassination until you reach the third one with the Red Ladder, which will bring you at the mountain top of the giants near this shack and you have to kill this enemy which also gives you a really awesome item set. But once you're done with that and you go back at the manor, interacting with the main lady over there will automatically give you this really awesome taker's cameo. And as I've said, the effects on it are pretty insane, of course, you will want to make use of heavy AoE builds, like for example, having that Blasphemous Greatsword is an amazing combination with this one, or pretty much anything that casts a lot of spells in a high area and takes down a lot of enemies at the same time. Now, moving on to number 4, let's talk about the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. It's actually earned if you completed the questline for Millicent and helped her in her final battle. This one greatly raises your power attacks with each successive attack, so it takes about 3 hits to proc it if you wear a sword or any well, melee weapon, so on the third hit you already see its effects activating, giving you a roughly 6 to 6.5% 6 damage increase per each stack onwards. Now this effect lasts only for a few seconds, after which it quickly falls off, stack by stack back to zero, so you will need to actually have a fast build for this, preferably making use of double wielding to make the most out of it, something like dual daggers, dual katanas, maybe dual swords, or anything that is just fast paced, because if you go with a slow weapon, you're simply not gonna make the most out of it. But during this quest line, you can actually get two more very powerful talismans, which are easily missable, these are the Millicent's Prostasis and the Flux Canvas Talisman, with the final one giving you a huge boost to incantation damage but you can miss them if you don't follow these steps so again spoilers alert if you didn't see this part yet then maybe play the game and then come back later but the quest line starts over in Kaelid here at Gauri's shack where you can go ahead and interact with this NPC and they will tell you about Millicent and the fact that yeah she has the scarlet rot affecting her now to help her you will first need to defeat commander O'Neill in the nearby swamp in the same region to get the gold needle 
from him. Once acquired, head back to Gowrie and he will fix it, after which point you will have to reset the area and go back to that NPC and talk to them so that you can get back that golden well needle. After this, you have to teleport to the nearby church. In this case, it's going to be the Church of the Plague, where Millicent is located. Once here, go ahead and give that needle to her, she will use it, and once again, teleport back to the side of Grace at the same location to advance the quest and reset the location. Once you exhausted all of her dialogues, it's time to head back at Gauri's shack, except this time you will find Millicent here, or at least that was my case. Upon doing so, you also have the option to reload the area again by respawning at a nearby side of Grace, and then coming back at the shack will actually respawn Gauri, and he will now become a spell vendor if you want some nice spells. Now from this point on, yeah, Millicent moves just a bit north of the Earth Tree Grazing Hill, site of Grace in the Altus Plateau, where you will need to actually give her a prosthetic arm to advance her story. Now to find such an arm, you actually need to head over to the Shaded Castle up north of the Altus Plateau and make your way over these walls. Through the poison fields, just ignore the enemies and then you're gonna see a ladder bringing you up onto the second kind of like inner wall. Simply head over to the left side up until you see this area with a room behind of a clean wrath knight that you can simply ignore, go inside and take up the prosthetic arm. With this you can now bring it back to the NPC and this is going to furthermore advance that storyline. Now the next time you meet her is going to be again in Elfiel back at that prayer room and you can go ahead and speak to her again and from this point on there's only one final step left and that is to make your way to the drainage channel grace right here on this side of the map you basically have to navigate down from that prayer room all the way through the base of this castle so to speak and run through some npcs and then there's gonna be a huge lake of wrath that you have to pass through before defeating a well kind of like corrupted earth tree in the same area but that is why i recommend going to that drainage in this place right here so you can save so you don't have to go through the same ordeal with the lake of rot once more but once you're done with that you just have to defeat this earth tree thingy and if you do that this is going to bring you to the final part of the mission with millicent which is to choose to either help or to fight against her now your options over here will completely change the types of rewards that you will get and there's also a way to kind of semi abuse this and still get all of the three rewards so here it goes you will first want to actually help millicent and once you do that and finish that encounter she will immediately give you the rotten wing sword insignia now from this point on you will want the millicent prosthesis which is a similar item that also gives more damage once you do more and more hits but on top of that it also gives you plus five into dexterity so this would be an amazing dexterity item now normally to get this in the first place you actually have to pick the option where you fight Millicent instead of helping her and you have to defeat her and then grab it from the ground but if you did help her in the first place the first time you see her after that encounter which is in the nearby location onto the ground over here you can just jump on her or deal any type of damage and she will also drop that Millicent prosthesis after she gives you the previous charm now of course this will lock you out of a certain ending but if you don't care about that secret ending you can just ignore this part and get the items instead. Finally, there's one more item you can get through this route. Once you helped Millicent, then killed her, and then got her prosthesis, there's one final item called Flux Canvas Talisman, which will give you a huge increase to your incantation damage. So what you have to do is, after doing all of this, is head back to that Gauri shack and just kill that NPC over there. If you did everything right, he should immediately die, dropping his bell bearing as well as that talisman, and it's going to give you a greater increase to your incantations which is actually the best in terms of incantations in the game past maybe like the scorpion seals but um, these apply to all incantations in the game not just like one specific group now in my case i was able to get this on my second playthrough on the first one i screwed something up which i'm not really sure exactly yet but if you did so yourself you will see that well in this case gauri is not actually dying but instead there's some kind of insect spawning instead of its corpse in that case you will know that it's it up and I do hear that trying to one shot him can fix that but for me personally I've tried it 10 times on my first playthrough it did not work but it did on my second and I did get 
that incantation talisman. This brings us to number 7, which is the Shard of Alexander, and of course, this one greatly boosts attack power of skills. And by skills, again, the game refers to the Ashes of War abilities on your weapons, which is the L2 on the controller. This provides a roughly 15% increase in damage in all skills you might have on, which is amazing if you couple this with something like the Moon Veil Katana or the Blasphemous Blade. Now, in order to acquire this in the first place, you have to finish the side quest for Iron Fist Alexander that you find in Northern Storm Hill, right here upon this larger area that you can access if you come from the War Master Shack. You need to help him to get unstuck first, so talk to him and then hit him in the back, and that should progress the story. From here on now, you will next meet him once you defeat Radan at his waypoint, just a bit behind it, scouting something here in the ground. And once you're done talking with him here, he will next be right south of the study hall if you make your way from the nearby artist shack so it's gonna be nearby this swamp encounter right here you will need to use an oil pot but luckily you can find one quite early at the siofra river simply going northeast of that waypoint over there and then heading to this kind of like vendor that will sell you the cookbook that will let you craft that oil pot and of course you also need some of the mushrooms that also spawn in the same area once you're done with that head back at alexander use the pot on him and that should free him right away. This brings you to the Lava Worm boss and no, you don't have to fight it, you just have to go in the same area it is, really close to the Volcano Manor right here. Simply ignore the boss, go here to this rock formation and you should see Alexander behind this rock. You can either talk to him from there or stay at the top of the rock, talk to him and he will give you a jar during this phase. From this point on, the next time you can encounter him is right before the Fire Giant boss encounter in the mountain tops of the giant so you can summon him and he's actually quite useful in that fight and once you're done with that this will open the crumbling forum azula which is the next area and this is like a little bit more complicated so just follow me essentially you have to progress through this area reach up until this dragon temple altar side of grace and defeat the two bosses over there which are actually quite quick and from this point on you'll want to make your way in a path upwards starting from the side of grace just nearby. Simply run up these stairs until you reach another fog wall that requires a key to activate. This will open up an elevator which will bring you up just run through these nearby collapsed structures on the right side until you reach your final location on this rather huge platform where you will find Alexander once more. He will challenge you to a duel and once you win that duel, you also get this really cool Shard of Alexander that as I've said, gives a huge damage increase to your skills and in this case, that's ashes of war. In my case, it was an amazing couple with that Moon Veil Katana, increasing my damage from 1442 per hit to 1658, so that's almost like 14%, sometimes it's 15% depending on the scaling of your other stats and what items you have equipped, but overall I would say it's roughly 14-15%, to 15%, which is quite significant and by far the biggest if you want to buff that Moon Veil, with the exception of just upgrading the sword. This is it though, there's of course many more that we will cover in other videos but this is lengthy enough so i thought that would be enough thanks so much for watching though and i'll see you guys in the next video